I'm your host, Riem Zin Labidin, and you are listening to Tech Tag Podcast. Today, our guest is Mohamed Omar Zayen, a DevOps engineer at Xing. Thanks, Omar, for being here today. Hello, Riem. Um... Um, I would like to thank you for having me here. In order to break the ice with the audience, tell us some fun facts about yourself. Well, maybe uh, I speak my uh, I speak about being a football fan and following some teams. And uh, my friends always tells me that I'm I'm a curse for the teams I support because they play good football and they always lose the the championships or finals but uh, yeah it's what it's, is the name of the team <laughs> well while i was yeah while i was young in egypt i was supporting the the malik team mm-hmm. and uh, yeah later on when i grew up a bit i was like 16 or 17 i supported arsenal from the english premier league they had some good years but when everyone started to follow the premier league and football in england uh, they are cursed now Really, <laughs> and people oh. think it's because of me. yeah. For my friends, yeah, I don't say people, but just my friends. They always tell me when you support a team, the team loses, and uh, yeah. <laughs> Is there uh, other fun fact to know you more? <laughs> well, I yeah, I was going to mention this actually. I was graduated from uh, so I have a bachelor of social sciences, so and it's completely different than what I do in my life. I mean, my 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 profession. So this is also, yeah, it surprises people when I tell them that uh, I tell them that I studied social sciences, but I'm an IT guy and uh, working with machines and softwares. How did you get there? How uh, did you change your career path and your studies in general? I think um, uh, it started really early. So I said in English after finishing high school, I didn't get the best grades to go to the. Um, to, to, to the faculty of engineering, but I, I wanted to be an engineer, I wanted to work with computers. So to follow my dream, I did something different. So my degrees uh, got me into the social sciences college. So, and uh, I started a part-time job to learn about computers. And yes, yeah, this is how it started with me in 2001. First, I, uh, there was an institute which is uh, yeah for people who wants to learn about computer computers, and uh, yeah, I was visiting the computer lab there. I had a friend working there, and he got me into uh, the lab and started to teach me some stuff. I mean, I can I can say this and proudly say this that yeah, my fam- my family couldn't afford to buy a computer for me at this time, you know, mm-hmm. and it was yeah, my I, I was lucky to have uh, this chance with this friend and. Uh, yeah, to start using computer, then he got me a job there and where I started to explore how computers are working. And uh, first of all, yeah, it was the internet started in Egypt since three or four years with some programs in the desktop, the computers running with the Windows operating system. And yeah, I started just to learn all this stuff. But I was keen to learn how are things working, what are softwares what are the people doing to create software and provide it to people and people can use it, you know, and how it communicates with network and hardware, you know. And uh, I had some connections with people working at the internet service providers where I was discussing with them what they are doing there, how to provide the service, how, how they are they providing the services to users, how they provide like an email service or a web page or something, because this was... The, the things that you can provide to businesses back in the days. An email, a website, basically it was like HTML back in the days, you know, so mm-hmm. it's not a dynamic web application or something. I wanted to learn how these uh, things are working. So there were other operating systems like uh, the so-called some microsystems company, they had a operating system called Solaris. There was also the Linux, there was also the Unix FreeBSD. So I wanted to know why people are not using this operating systems on their uh, desktops. So, and I wanted to learn about it. And uh, yeah, when I bought my first computer, I just wanted to try all of this and to, to learn to become an engineer like these people and to 
I think it, uh, I thought it will be, I will have more opportunities and I will learn something different. I wanted somehow to be different back in the days because yeah, everything was running on Windows. Windows was the mainstream for computers, but this was the beginning. I tried so many things. I engaged with uh, communities online and uh, um, in the IRC with people who created this, you know, operating systems, programs and stuff. And I was trying a lot of things. Mm -hmm. And uh, then, yeah, through the years, I switched jobs to different places because I wanted to support my studies, you know? Yeah, because mm -hmm. it was always part-time. So I even work at in a company which supplies computer hardware with operating systems. And uh, yeah, I somehow uh, tried to do some automation. And uh, yes, this is, was also one of the concepts I learned back in the days that you can automate stuff, which was nice because it wasn't something like... Uh, yeah, mainstream or uh, or something people usually do. But yeah, it, it, it helped me to, to understand the idea and to just to know that you can automate stuff. Nice. And what did you do next after you finished your studies? Later on, when I finished my uh, college studies, I tried to find an opportunity. I was lucky to, ha to, to uh, have a job opportunity at a startup in, my, in the city where I lived in Egypt, Alexandria. Mm -hmm. It was a startup called uh, Gawab, and they have uh, they had a project, which uh, no, not a project. It's a service. They provided email services uh, to companies and for free to people. They were the first company to provide uh, an AJAX web mail and also to provide a mailbox with a ten gigabyte quota, even before Gmail or. Uh, Hotmail or Microsoft or something. And they were running everything on uh, Linux operating system using virtualization technologies and with all the softwares are open source. And this was really nice. And yeah, I had a very nice interview with them where they, they, they liked what I did, my experiments with the operating systems and the open source softwares on my, uh, um, you know, on my personal uh, machine. And they hired me. And there, I learned a lot. Yeah, working with uh, production services and the different uh, type of people. So web designers, web developers, people who could different languages, PHP, C, Ruby. And uh, yeah, it, I explored a lot back in the days with this opportunity. Yeah, later on, well, as you know, like many startups, they didn't survive, but it was a good learning. <clears throat> Then I switched to another company. I think at this point in time, I was looking somehow for a stable job and do something different. And uh, yeah, but I continued to work with communities and I was also uh, teaching. I, I teach it sometimes in the uh, ITI Institute. It's a governmental institute, teaches mm -hmm. um, the graduates of different colleges um, like engineering or other colleges. Um, um, how to do stuff or for, for yeah software programming or uh, UI UX or uh, uh, system administration or system engineering as you call it today and uh, yeah I did a lot of community work also so I was also a member of uh, EGLAG Egyptian Linux Linux users group with, with a lot of experienced people and nice people they are now also leading the technology in Egypt in different companies and also in some other countries. It's a, it's a good opportunity to be around the community because I think it offers also more opportunities in uh, the career and also uh, to learn from them and to, to get more uh, enthusiasm from them, right? Exactly. This was it because we really pushed each other and we were also excited about, yeah, inspiring other people about what we do and... Uh, yeah, hearing people and answering questions from them, helping them with providing uh, them with uh, courses or classes or something and hold uh, events in different cities also. And uh, yeah, I remember we had a very nice event with, with this uh, community. Yeah, and as you said, exactly. You communicate with other people. Yeah, I would say it's uh, maybe the same industry, but they work in different companies, different uh, projects and yeah you have good connections that you can switch jobs ask someone to guide you or um, give you some help and uh, 
yeah, this is what it is. I think you 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 know about this. You're doing a great community. You you did a great community work, as I know. Thank you. During uh, your uh, internships and your jobs, you tried programming, or you started to learn more DevOps tasks. Well, I think um, when I had uh, my first job, as I said, um, yeah, automation was one still a thing. So it was basically some automation with uh, shell scripts and uh, yeah, sometimes PHP, simple PHP scripts because I'm not a PHP programmer. And uh, yeah, we tried to automate a lot of uh, frameworks or automation tools were not available back in the days. So. So it, it, it becomes um, mainstream automation and uh, all this stuff. I think when we had the, the term of DevOps, you know, and we have a lot of different tools now to do this. So yeah, we were trying to do stuff this way. At least we have the uh, the idea and the concept of automation. And yeah, I started to, 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 to touch, of course, and uh, not really build programs, but at least yeah, I understand how they are working and how to support the, the, uh, re- the, the, the developers who create the softwares in this matter. And uh, uh, currently you are working uh, uh, in Germany, right? Yeah, at some point in my life, I thought about, yeah, the, the market was different in Egypt. Yeah, I think it's different now. It's huge now. But uh, back in the days, it was 2014 or 15, where, yeah, the market was somehow closed. And there were, you know, you always look to learn, you know, it's not just, I thought I'm, I'm in a, a very stable job at this time, and I'm not learning much. So I thought, yeah, you need some um, some refreshment. Let's try to do something different. So people were talking about the uh, containerization and the uh, stateless applications and, uh, you know, something different was in the market and I wasn't really close to it. So I decided to look for opportunities. And, uh, yeah, a lot of friends traveled to work in Germany and to Netherlands and to the UK, also Australia. And uh, I thought about, yeah, let's look at the opportunities there. And I found that I need to, 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 to add some skills to myself. So I started to do some trainings and to attend some courses and do some, some things on my own to be ready, doing interviews first and to, uh, to, to be able to work here. And I think it took me like eight to 10 months to be ready for some interviews. I was lucky to, to find a very nice company. They interviewed me. And I visited them in Germany, where we discussed my role and what I will do with them. And then the uh, yeah, I was hired and in 2016. I jumped over here. It was interesting. It was a gaming company. So imagine um, 12 web games running with different technologies. Some are in C, some are in PHP, I think, and uh, Flash games. It's old, but we had the whole infrastructure running from my team different technologies, different tools to support these 12 games and also to help them to launch new games. It was a really a good uh, opportunity to learn and to add some experience to the knowledge I gained when I started to study and uh, to, to gain some skills. And yeah, I think yeah, I, I stayed for almost three years there before I switched to my current company. And it's a different story. So... If I talk about it, yeah, uh, it's a really uh, big company. They have um, lots of uh, business to customer solutions and business to business solutions. And uh, yeah, um, speaking about my role there, I'm, I'm, my title is a system engineer, but the role is a DevOps engineer. We do a lot of stuff of automation. We run all of our softwares with uh, Kubernetes and uh, and yeah, it, it, it is amazing uh, how I got myself there because, yeah, when I started with them, I didn't also have the knowledge or experience with the, techn- the whole technology stack they are using. But I also wanted to, to, to learn about it. I wanted to work there actually before I apply. And uh, yeah, I began to study some stuff. And when I had the uh, technical interviews with them, I told them, yeah, I want to work with you because I want to learn this. Because this is 
these are some technologies that are mainstream now and uh, yeah people are working with them and uh, just open the board for me if if i work with you guys this is how it is like now i just wanted to to go there learn some stuff and of course to help them to achieve and to finish projects and it has been really amazing i'm almost uh, yeah i'm two years and uh, one month there now great i'm pretty sure that during this a whole career path change there were a lot of obstacles to get there and are there some obstacles during your uh, moving from uh, egypt to germany yeah speaking about obstacles in egypt of course there are not being graduated from an engineering faculty is a problem if you ask uh, one of the telecommunications companies which are the leading companies in Egypt to 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 have a job there so i was interviewed i think twice at vodafone and once at uh, t data i think and they accepted to 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 have the interviews and they were looking at my college degree nah, no we want to hire an engineer i know, we we know you 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 have a good skills you have a good uh, uh cv you have a good experience but it's uh, yeah. that that was basically it i think back in the days so until 2009 10 it was easy not easy to find a job but uh, it was open because we <laughs> I think there were not so many graduates maybe of engineering not so many guys with experience but it's completely different after that so they prefer to hire engineers and this is the opposite here in Germany so they just hire you if you are good for the job they do the interview with you to give you um a test or something they of course talk to you and uh, see how you're what is your personality how you will work with the team and uh, how organized you are and these are just look at your your skills what you can do for them not some papers or something yeah. you know i totally understand that it's exactly uh, like that in tunisia and in germany they care about what you are capable of uh, doing and they help you to grow and uh, i like this mindset exactly yeah other obstacles in germany yeah of course coming to to this country people sticks to speak the, the the language here you know yeah so of course if you are not ready you need to learn some basic german in the beginning to 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 deal with uh with the day to day stuff outside work but luckily also we we are we are lucky because since 2016 all the, the company most of the companies or the startups here they are hiring people who speaks english you know yeah there there is still some companies here requires german i think if you work for a yeah some fintech company or a health insurer or a bank or something yeah they they require german but most yeah. of the other companies they they hire english speaking people in the company i work for we have 59 different nationalities wow and yeah this is really huge yeah, and i'm proud Amazing. that i'm i'm working in a company that have this so we all communicate in english and uh, it's really nice so yeah uh, living here of course yeah as i said you need german and uh, it will really help you if if you really learn german in germany yeah Before we started you mentioned uh, that you worked as a teacher at one point in time in your life right Yeah 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 I did it uh, three times in the uh, ITI institute in Egypt so I think the same class every year and uh, yeah I really liked it I was inspired by the community work I did and I was offered this uh, you know kind of uh, of job and it was really nice working with uh, people with you know ambitions to learn and to to get into the uh, to to what we do you know i remember once um, i think it was the first time when i uh, i was teaching there i had a, a class it was there was 20 students there one of them she was uh, graduated from uh, faculty of pharmacy i was al- yeah you know i was always introducing myself and telling uh, a brief about my story and how i got into this career path and the, yeah it, it surprised me a bit 
because she was uh, graduated from a faculty of pharmacy. So, so she's basically a doctor. She can do her master's and PhD later, but she wanted to do something different. She did something maybe because of re- personal reasons or family reasons, you know, they wanted her to become a doctor. But then when she was graduated, she wanted to learn to become a system administrator. And after, I think after she was graduated from the institute, she was successful uh, successful in finding a job and following her dream. And this is really amazing because I always tell this to people, just follow what you want to be. Just try to explore the path and to, to, to get help maybe from other people and just push yourself hard to, to, to and believe in yourself that you can achieve your goal. Yeah, this is a, a very inspiring story. So um, to wrap up, I would like to ask you, which advice would you give to your younger self today? Well, I remember, yeah, Linus Torvalds. He's the creator of the Linux kernel. He once mm-hmm. said, if Microsoft ever does apl- applications for Linux, it means I have won. This guy created the Linux kernel and uh, together with the community, he was pushing the idea that Linux can be in the market and can can win. And no one believed him. No one believed us back in the days. It was always that, that giant software company, Microsoft, you know. But now, days or I think since 2008, 9, every Android device is running Linux. Now all of our servers are running Linux or uh, Unix. Desktops are Mac OS. It's 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 Unix. And uh, he 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 spent years doing this. He spent years improving the, the the Linux kernel and software. And you know, I tell everyone not to give up. Follow your dream. Uh, try to to uh, write yourself a path. Have a mind map and write what you want to be. Check what you can. Do what if you can learn from others what you want to be, what you want to do. I'm pretty sure you don't need to spend a lot of money to learn or to, to, to attend courses or something. But yeah, support yourself if you can. But also without this, you can learn and to, you can become something. And if, if you if you want to learn and find a job in your country or to travel, I'm pretty sure you will do it if you if you if you just keen on your in your goal and uh, you will achieve it. Like yes. many people did already. It's really inspiring and very, very nice advice. Thanks a lot, Omar, for this amazing conversation. I got inspired and I hope that the audience also got this feeling. And it's really nice to talk to you. Yeah, we are. Thank you really for, for having me in this interview. And I really hope that the audience will learn something from... Um, our discussion and uh, yeah thank you again uh, i wish you all the best and i'm looking forward to hear from you i'm sure that i will hear more inspiring stories maybe i will uh, have another interview with you to uh, tell me what is next in your journey I, i'm thinking actually i was um talking to my team lead and yeah we were discussing and i told i told him that uh, i will have a new year's resolution for myself So I'm currently preparing it. So maybe we will talk about it in another episode. Wow, I will be very, very happy. I wish you all the best. Thank you so much. My friends, I hope that you enjoyed today's episode with Omar and learned that it is possible to change your career path even if you are studying another major. I personally got inspired by his story and by the story of his student. I'm looking forward to our next episode with a new guest and a new inspiring story. Until then, stay safe and stay tuned to our next episode. Tic Tac, tackle the inspiration.